So with recent news breaking about Fed now launching in the United States, completely overhauling the entire banking industry, everyone wants to know, will XRP pull a 69,000% gain like it did back from February of 2017 all the way to January of 2018? Right now, XRP sits at 75 cents. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what's happening on the chart. I'm also going to be talking about what the SEC is planning on doing with their appeal, what Jeremy Hogan has to say, and also top a banker is saying XRP cannot remain cheap long in terms of retail investors being priced out of the markets. And so we have a lot of news to bring to you in this video. We're talking about what's happening with Bitcoin, breaking market structure, where Bitcoin could go next. And then also the SEC accepting six spot Bitcoin ETF proposals for review. So if you're feeling bullish, comment 777. If you're feeling blessed, comment 777. If you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree, you know what to do. Welcome back to the channel. So if we're looking at XRP right now, sitting at 75 cents, Ethereum at 1,887, Bitcoin at $29,800. Not too much has been happening over the past week with FedNow launching. I have another video dropping for you guys here soon, talking all about that, along with the BRICS summit coming up next month to be ready for. But it's gonna take some time to get massive adoption into this space because when the SWIFT system launched, it took a few decades to have all the banks uh, adopt it. And with about 30 to 40 banks on board with Fed now, and there's over 4,000 banks. It's going to take some time for them to be able to overhaul, you know, their entire banking infrastructure before adopting XRP. So where is XRP going to go in the short term? Well, if we're looking at the chart right here on the hourly, uh, XRP broke below this ascending uh, support right here, and we saw this back test. So we saw a break right here. We see this back test followed by continuation of the downtrend. Uh, we can see this falling wedge formation right here. XRP needs to hold the support at 71 cents. And ultimately on the RSI, we're sitting at 34 right here. We bounced off of 26 on the RSI. So if XRP can break this descending resistance and we see a reversal right here and we see XRP trade to the upside, well, that would be good news in this uh, bullish flag for a continuation to the upside to retest this macro downward trending resistance right here all the way upwards of a dollar and 30 cents now on the contrary if xrp does not hold the support at 71 cents i would expect xrp to back test the support all the way down at about 56 cents that it previously struggled to break out from September of 2022, March of 2023, and June of 2023. And so the United States Securities and Exchange Commission suggests that it may appeal a recent ruling in its case against Ripple Labs. So the SEC is arguing that the ruling that took place goes against fundamental security laws and principles, such as the Howey test, which determines what falls under a category of an investment contract. And John Deaton posted on Twitter, do we really want to the judge to ask herself, does my strict application of the Howey test in this case result in an outcome in 2023 that comports with the policy implications behind a 1934 statute? And Jeremy Hogan posted on Twitter that heading into a settlement conference, an appeal is really the only ammunition the SEC has against Ripple. Of course, it says it will appeal, but I don't think you can read too much into the statement one way or another. And he recently just posted this on YouTube. And so, briefly, where from here first the individual defendants will have their trial maybe early next year either side can appeal this ruling but that would be a request for what's called an interlocutory appeal and those are very rarely granted instead it's more likely to me that appeals happen after the trial and with the trial in 2024 even early 2024 and appeals of course taking a long time this decision is probably solid through and into 2025 and that's a long time. A lot of things can happen to them. So congratulations to you. I can't tell you how happy I was for you when I read this order because you now own the only major digital, digital asset with regulatory clarity. Once again, goodbye. And thank you for your support. It's not the journey, but the friends I made along the way. So even with an appeal, it would take a few years. And by then, we would already be in 2025. And the end of the bull market would be happening around roughly, if we base this on the four-year market cycle theory of Bitcoin, October to December of 2025 would be the peak for Bitcoin. And a top banker is saying that XRP can't remain cheap for long. And uh, XRP retail investors will be priced out. You know, Shannon Thorpe is basically saying that a few of you asked about price predictions. So in terms of an XRP price predictions time frame, well, no one can predict the exact price. 
Uh, she is saying that I think we know this, the price of XRP cannot be cheap in the future. And what's more, retail will be priced out of XRP at some point. I see a lot of nonsense online regarding the price is going to jump and then crash because everyone is going to sell. Well, that may be your theory. Here's her theory. Retail only makes up about 1% of XRP. And by the time the Fed banks, businesses, et cetera, start putting their money into it, that 1% of retail is going to look like a minnow in the ocean. And that 1% will not fluctuate the price at all. A large quantity of XRP facilitates a large quantity of banks, whilst high price allows for higher transactions with less, with less XRP. And there's only so much XRP. Uh, that's her opinion. Now, timeframes, again, uh, something that can't be 100% accurate. However, with FedNow just recently going live, she would assume that they cannot be the only one going live. Whatever the Fed does, banks must follow because that is how they communicate back and forth uh, because the Fed's the central bank. And whatever banks choose to do, their business customers must follow because that is how they communicate with the banks. And that is why uh, she deals in treasury management and money movement and the connections to that money movement. So uh, for her to further explain this, she previously worked at Wachovia in the cash vault. And Wachovia was bought out by Wells Fargo back in 2009. In the cash vault, they use a system called Glory. And fast forward 15 years later, she went back to the initial cash vault to find out that they were still using the same Glory system. This system is also how the Fed, the Fed's shipments of currency could be placed. So what she's getting at is she'd be very surprised if the Federal Reserve were the only ones going live. Whatever the Fed does, the banks will follow. That's basically the reason why banks close on holidays because the Fed is closed. Banks are for profit. So why would the company stop operations because of a holiday if they're not for profit? So think about it. Throughout her 15 year career in banking, we're entering a new financial era and hashtag XRP, XRP army and ripple. So that's good news. But in the short term, what would cause liquidity to flow into the market? Well, we need to look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin's buying a classic crossover. So Bitcoin is closely copying prior Bitcoin prior cycles. And the time is almost right for a bullish surge, according to uh, Titan of Crypto. And so Titan of Crypto is calling this phenomenon a bull market kickoff. And according to historical Bitcoin to US dollar price data, he drew attention to a 21 week simple moving average currently at $27,900. And once this upward sloping trend line clears the immediate spot price range, a protracted period of upside follows giving the 21 week SMA its nickname, the bull market line. So once the weekly 21 moving average crosses over a Bitcoin market structure, it will kick off the bull market he forecasts. And as you can see here in the past, the last time that this market structure was broke back in 2019, there was a back test for this black swan for COVID. The time before then, this crossover, you know, the mar it almost came back down to back test the market structure. The time before then, back in 2012, 2013, it broke above, followed by a back test. And Bitcoin is right at that market structure line right now. And as Cointelegraph reported, the downside support remains tied to the 200-week simple moving average, along with various other daily and weekly trend lines uh, functioning as a line in the sand during Bitcoin's recent bear market. And so we can see the 200-week SMA in red trending upwards, along with the four-year moving average as well, too. So coinciding with this steep ascending support line right here, Bitcoin would need to see a bounce you know, off of roughly $28,000 to stay in this range and break above this zone of resistance that it struggled to break above. You know, it acted as resistance back in May. It was support back in January of 2022. It was massive support from May of 2021 to June of 2021. So this is a massive zone right here that it keeps getting rejected from. And when Bitcoin, if Bitcoin breaks this line, holds it as support, that is massive bullish news as we'll continue the uptrend. Now, if Bitcoin breaks below this line, the next stop of support would be roughly around this uh, breakout level of August of 2022. February of 2023, and it bounced off support on June of 2023. So this would be the next support line at roughly 25K. If it breaks below 25K, the next support would be all the way down at like $21,555. So what would cause a break to the upside or what would cause a break to the downside to retest these support zones? Well, the SEC is accepting six spot Bitcoin ETF proposals for review and BlackRock's ETF being one of them. Now it has a 45 day to roughly like 200 day uh, approval rate. So we have about 45 to 200 days to see what the SEC is gonna say next about that. But one thing that's interesting to note, if we look back in history, and we look at gold, we compare Bitcoin, the digital gold to physical gold. Well, the first gold ETF launched was Gold Bullion Securities, uh, which listed on 28th of March of 2003 on the Australian Securities Exchange by ETF Securities and its major shareholder. And the interesting part about that is when this ETF was approved right here that you can see in this vertical yellow line, 
Gold saw a massive breakout and a massive price rally from that point right there where gold rallied upwards of you know nearly 500% or a 5X for gold. And as you guys can see here, the psychology of a market cycle on, on gold where you see this euphoria stage right here, you see complacency right here, you see anxiety, denial, panic, capitulation right here, and then you see anger and depression happening right here when gold was around $250 per ounce. Now, the resistance for gold, which acted as support back in 1993, it was resistance in October of 1999 when it broke below it. And then it was also resistance from May of 2002 all the way to December of 2002 when it broke above it and got rejected from the next resistance zone of roughly, you know, 370 some odd dollars, 308 dollars came back to back test this, the ETF was approved, and then we saw gold skyrocket after that. So could we see something similar happen for Bitcoin where we see Bitcoin come all the way down to the 200 moving average, the four year moving average, then the SEC approves the spot Bitcoin ETF for BlackRock, and we see Bitcoin break out of this range right here, break the resistance, the market structure, and then go on this absolute parabolic bull run leading up to 2025. Or Will we see Bitcoin break below the 200 week moving average, below the four year moving average and trade all the way down to 25 or 20K? That's anyone's guess, but ultimately I'm more bullish on XRP than I am on Bitcoin. But in order for XRP to see momentum to the upside and for XRP to break this descending resistance and you know have a snap above 130, not 130, a dollar and 30 cents, ultimately leading to $2 and then the all time high of nearly $4 before even breaking that and then continuing the uptrend for 2025, we need to see liquidity flow into Bitcoin. And we need to see good news come from the SEC approving the spot Bitcoin ETFs because that would allow massive hedge funds, massive institutions, government entities, massive banks to flow money into Bitcoin and the rest of the markets. And XRP is poised to absorb mass amounts of that liquidity. I don't need it. Like SpongeBob after a day in the sun. I definitely don't need it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's what I got for you guys today. If you're ready to become the first millionaire in your family tree, you know what to do. Go to bullrunners.com, 